Hi, and thanks for joining us online. We're grateful for the opportunity to tell you more about Long Branch Covenant Church, and hopefully we'll have the opportunity to meet you in person at some point. Whether you're a member here at the church or just another follower of Jesus Christ, or perhaps you're someone who's interested in finding out more about Christianity and the things that Jesus said and who he really is. Well, we're hoping to be able to help you do that because there's three things that we wanna help you do. We wanna help you connect. First of all, connect to God. Jesus is the source of all life and goodness. And if you can connect to him, it'll change your whole life. We wanna also help you connect to other people because community was God's idea. And we're supposed to journey through life together, not on our own. Secondly, we want to help you grow. We want you to grow as a whole person, not just in your faith, but in your faith, we want you to have a dynamic relationship with God. And then again, be able to grow together with other people and join other people on the journey of faith. And finally, we want to find ways to help you invest your life, to be part of something bigger than yourself. We all know deep down inside that that's really what we're meant to be. We're not supposed to be going it alone. We're supposed to be part of bigger, something bigger and ultimately be able to make an impact on our communities, on our families, people we work with, our cities and towns, even our nation. And that happens when we invest our lives in that. We do hope that you'll be encouraged by today's sermon. But first, here's some information on some other upcoming events at the church. Although the pandemic has limited some of our activities, there are still ways to connect, grow, and invest at Long Branch Covenant Church. We host breakfasts for women and men on the second and fourth Saturday mornings each month. You can sign up at lbcovenant.org slash welcome slash upcoming dash events. Also, check out our life groups, a great way to meet and to get to know us better. Most of them meet on Zoom a couple times a month. And of course, visit our website or call the office at 732-870-2028 to get info or ask for prayer. We'd love to help you in any way we are able. Now, here's today's sermon. How I am? Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> We're back. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about how when we ask God for something, we just need to realize He's generous and He wants to give it to us. And so I, uh, this morning I remember it, just praying as we started, asking God to make his presence known, and, and he did. And I was pondering what I'm going to talk about, and, uh, you know, I'm always asking God to help me be clear. And I was so overwhelmed um, uh, during worship with uh, gratitude. I'm glad we had a couple of things to do so I could pull myself back together. <laughs> so I want to talk to you this morning. Uh, I want to continue on... Um, on the theme that we've been on with looking for God to give us clarity, give us wisdom, uh, and, and just our, our future as a church. Now let me reiterate what, what Tony said. If you haven't had a chance to give feedback to me or the other elders or your life group leader, please take time to do that. And please continue to, to uh, pray uh, and search uh, the mind and the heart of God. We need to hear what, we, what you believe God's saying to you. It's important for us. And also, uh, if you weren't able to be at your life group or you're not in a life group yet and you'd like to hear what I shared with the life groups about what we see as possibilities for our future as a church, contact me and we'll, we'll make that happen. One of the things we've been doing is talking with others whose, whose uh, advice or whose wisdom that we uh, appreciate. And one of those people was Pastor Vinnie Manzo. And one of the things uh, Pastor Manzo encouraged me and he said, he said, make sure you take time to celebrate the things that God has done among you. And uh, as I pondered that and pondered this month of what I'm going to share the rest of the month, I, I want to take a step on that, and, and this morning I want to talk about celebrating faithfulness. Uh, we already do that to a measure. Uh, we have what the staff calls Project Thankful, and every, every now and then we, we surprise somebody on Sunday morning, and we drag them up here, people that hate to be in front of cameras and mics and stuff, and we tell them how grateful we are for them, their service behind the scenes. And we have 
We have so many people like that that serve. Even people that, that you know what they do, they probably do three things more than you know what they do uh, because we are a serving community. And I want to talk to you this morning about celebrating faithfulness. You know, when we think of someone who is faithful, uh, commonly we think of someone who's reliable, they're steady, they're true and loyal. We might think, well, they have an unwavering commitment or an unchanging affection, someone who is faithful. Um, but the biblical idea of faithfulness goes much deeper than that. It's, in fact, built on the idea of faith itself. That when we believe in Christ, we're called to be faithful, to be full of faith toward him and toward his purposes and toward what he's doing on the earth. In fact, Paul told um, the Colossians that Epaphras, he said, our, our fellow beloved servant who is a faithful servant of Christ. It was a, it was a title when you were called faithful in the scripture, in the, in the New Testament. It was a, it's an honoring title. It's not just, oh, we can count on that guy, um, which, which is true about a per faithful person, but when we call them a faithful person, we're saying so much more than that. In fact, it's so important is because one of the simple ways to describe the nature of God is to simply say, God is faithful. When you want to know what's going on in your life and you're in a time of turmoil or in a time of difficulty, one of the things your friends will remind you is, don't worry, God is faithful. He'll, st he'll stay at it even when you get off track. And this morning I want to read to you a passage uh, uh, from uh, Philippians that you've probably all heard before and one verse in it I think we all quote from time to time. But I want, to, I want to read it to you because I want you to think about faithfulness and I think about celebrating faithfulness uh, and maybe a little different than you have already. So let, let's read this passage together. Or I'll read it and you can look at it on the screen. Paul says this, and this is beginning in verse 3 of, of uh, Philippians 1. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all, in view of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. For it is not only right for me to feel this way about you, you all, because I have, in, I have you in my heart since both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of grace with me. For God is my witness, how I long for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and in all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ having been filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I pray this morning that that which you've put in my heart, that which uh, I, you have my mind and heart is focused on, I, that I would be able to communicate it clearly, Lord. For indeed, you are a faithful God and you have made us a faithful people, Lord. I pray that we can Listen to Paul's words, Lord, and let it impact our lives, our, our perspective, our outlook, our resolve, Lord, our expectation. Let us, let us celebrate faithfulness in a way that continues to change our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Paul basically prays two or three things here. He prays with thankfulness for this group of people because of their faithfulness. He says uh, that he, he prays that, he says that, it, that it's normal for, for him to pray this way. It's, it makes sense for him to pray this way because of who they are. And he prays that they would continue to grow in the things that make them faithful. Now, if you're observant, Paul never uses the word faithful in this passage. But I, I posit to you this morning, I hold out to you this morning, that this is a prayer for a faithful people, 
a prayer of gratefulness for people that are faithful and uncovers to us some of the things that are at work when people are then dubbed faithful. And so I want to look at those things this morning as, as we celebrate faithfulness and, and look at how they work in us as well. So he says this, he says, he gives thanks for them because of their participation in the gospel from the first day until now. Now the word participation there is actually the same word that we use for fellowship. It's translated in other passages as fellowship. You know, good old koinonia for those of you who are Greek scholars, right? It, it really means a joining together. It's a, it, it, the ESV says, for your partnership in the gospel from the first day till now. Another alternative way of saying it is, for, I, I, I give thanks for you for your sharing in the preaching of the gospel. Um, it, it really speaks of investment. See, people that are faithful, they invest their lives. And whatever they invest their lives in are the things they stay faithful to. And Paul's talking about people who invested their lives into the gospel and into him. And he says, I give thanks for you because from the very first day up until now, you have been my partner. You've participated with me. You put your faith, when you receive the faith, you put it with me. And you said, in so many words, they said to him, we're in this with you now, and we're in, with, in this with you till the end. That's why I think this is a picture of faithfulness. And he says, it, you know, the other piece of it is that not only did they join in, but there's a continuity. Uh, if you're a faithful person, there's continuity. You're not faithful Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, and, and you know, well, Friday, I'm off today, you know. Hey, I need you. No, sorry, I'm off today. You know, today's not my day to be faithful. Think of it with your, the people you love, you know. Would you hire someone to work from you who said, well, I'll do a good job Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But Tuesdays and Thursdays, you, you really, I'll be there, but you can't count on me for anything. Or maybe I won't even show up. You, you don't hire a person. You're not going to say, well, that's the kind of person I want to be able to count on. That's not a, you want somebody who you can count on all the time. That's a faithful person. And that's what, what God does in people and makes them faithful. And they did this with him from the first day until now. And you know, he was writing from prison. He was writing from prison. So he goes on to say a couple of verses later, that was verse five, a couple of verses later he says this. He says, both in my imprisonment and again in defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers with me, uh, of grace with me. So it's not only participation and continuity, but it's through the difficult times, you know. If somebody only stuck with you when things were going well, you'd be less inclined to call them a faithful friend, wouldn't you? But here he is, he's in jail. He's been arrested for the gospel, and he's saying, even in my imprisonment, in fact, he's written this letter, and he's written different letters like this after he's received gifts from church because the kind of prison he was in, the kind of jail he was in, he had to pay for his own jailing. And so they gave him money to live on under his house arrest. So faithfulness is not only faithful uh, when it's good times, but it's through difficulty and challenges. And we could say it this way, faith and faithfulness are always tested. I don't know, if it, there's, a, there's a, a couple of places Paul talks about the people that abandoned him when things went sour, right? And I don't know if you, you know, maybe you have a relative, someone who's, who's been in j jail or been arrested or something like that. There's a certain shame that comes when someone goes through that. And it kind of falls on everybody around them, you know? But what he's saying is, you weren't ashamed of me you stuck with me even when I was arrested. And there were other people out there that were saying, well, what's wrong with Paul? He got arrested. We're out preaching. And Paul says, as long as they're preaching Jesus, I don't care. I don't care. As long as they're preaching Jesus. You know? Even Jesus himself speaks of faithfulness as those who see it through. Look at, look at uh, I think it's Matthew 24 and 5. He, he's not only talking about faithfulness, 
He's talking in the context of finishing, of, of getting to the end and sticking it through. And we, we want to be faithful, and we ask ourselves, how do we remain faithful? Well, God's grace is what makes you faithful. It's what makes you faithful. It's what keeps you faithful. Paul says and calls them partakers of grace with him. Maybe in our language he's saying, you drank from the same well that I drank from. You tasted the same good thing from God that I, that I tasted. You experienced the same thing. You know? It's like when you meet a stranger somewhere and you start talking to them and you realize they're also a believer in Christ and you begin to talk. And though you've never known them your whole life, you begin to feel this affinity with them because they've experienced the same grace of God as you have. And all of a sudden you're talking as if you've been old friends and you've known each other. And Paul's talking about somebody who's then gone through it all with them. Many of you can talk to each other this way. We've partaken in grace together. We've gone through hardships together. We've been discouraged together, but we've stood together and we walked together. That's what Paul is describing here of people like that. And that's what is a good description of you. That is a good description of Long Branch Covenant Church. With all our foibles, with all our shortcomings, with all the things that we could do so much better, the things that we shouldn't have done, the things that we should have seen ahead of time, the woulda, shouldas, and couldas, throw them all aside, God has made you a faithful people. And we need to learn to celebrate it. We need to learn to celebrate God's goodness and his faithfulness in our lives. So I want to talk to you about that this morning, celebrating his goodness. We, don't, we, we can't take his goodness and how it's made us faithful for granted. You know? We don't want to say, well, this church has got this and that. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're kind of faithful too. No, 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 we celebrate this faithfulness. So I want to give you at least three reasons to, to uh, celebrate uh, faithfulness. We should celebrate faithfulness first and foremost because it reveals God's grace at work. If you become a faithful person, it means God's grace is at work in your life. Now I know, before you were a Christian, before a person's a Christian, they can be a reliable person, can't they? They can be somebody you can count on. Can't, of course they can. But where does it stop? You know, usually when the going gets tough. You know? I had friends, I had friends... I had a group of friends that we were all together for years of our lives, from our early teenage years to into our early 20s. And one of them, who I thought actually was one of the closest ones to me, when I began to share about my conversion to Christianity, he basically said, nice knowing you, pal. He wanted nothing to do with it or me anymore. It wasn't mean or anything, he just, that's it, we're done. That's it, we're done. And, I, you know, how, how could he walk away from the, all those years of friendship? Because I was going somewhere he didn't want to go. But not so with the people of God. Not so with the peace of, people of God. We need to be reminded that the faithfulness we have is because God made us faithful. Because of his faithfulness, as we grow in him, as we experience him, as we are filled with his life and renewed in the renewing of our mind and the renewing of our person and the maturing of our person, that God makes us faithful. He makes us able to overcome things. Things we would have quit on before, we stay at now because God makes us faithful. We should celebrate that. We should celebrate that every day. Secondly, we celebrate God's faithfulness because it reveals that God is using us. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't always feel like God's man of power in the hour every day. I mean, I, I don't. I don't feel that way. I don't, and sometimes I wonder if anything I do makes any difference. You ever feel that way? No, it's just me. I know. It's just me. You know. Sometimes we don't see the things that God is using us for. We don't see the impact. All of you who teach the, the children, you, you, you don't always see it. And it might be years later when one of them says, you know, when you said that, this changed me there. Yeah. 
two weeks ago, we were reminded of this when Josh Bova got up and said, I was going to share about one thing, but Kenny read from Psalm 145 about how one generation tells another generation of your faithfulness, and he said, you've done that to me. God was using us, and we didn't even know it. God was touching Josh's life, and we didn't even realize the impact we've made. He comes, he comes around LBCC and he's got nothing but warm, grateful things to say about us because we have stood with him and strengthened him as a man as he goes into all these, what's it, 27 schools he's in now with FCA. And that's our faithfulness at work through another person. He's using us even when we don't say it. And thirdly, we want to celebrate God's goodness and, uh, in making us faithful and his faithfulness because it reveals God's intent to complete his work in us. You know, God wants to keep working in you and I. Um, faithfulness is only, the kind we're talking about, is only mm, true in, if it makes it to the end. You, know? you, you can't say, well, he was a good husband for 20 years, but 10 years ago he left me. No, that, you know, he has to be there the whole 30 years. Faithfulness needs to see it to the end. And to be that faithful, we see that God wants to continue to make us the people he wants us to make. Paul says this. This is the, the famous verse that everybody quotes from this passage. For I am confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perfect it to the day of Christ Jesus. He's saying, God made you the people that you become because you've responded to his grace and God will certainly finish what he began because God is faithful. Yeah. Now, a couple of things. He didn't write this to you as an individual. He wrote this to a church. In fact, if we go back and look at the whole passage, how often he said, you all, you all. You know, This isn't, for I'm common to this very thing, he began a good work in you. It's he who began a good work in y'all, in y'all. He who began a good work in all of you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. He will certainly finish what he started. Now, if you read the letter to the Philippians, there's some unique things about it. It's simply a letter of encouragement, exhortation, reminders. You know there's no real actual correction in the letter? If you think of all the other letters Paul wrote, you know, you know who has bewitched you, Galatians? He says, hi, how are you doing? What's wrong with you? You know, he writes to the Corinthians, God did, you, God did this in you. I know God's working in there, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've heard that you're doing stuff that's so bad that even the, the unbelievers are saying, what's wrong with you? you know? I mean, he's correcting people all along. But the church at Philippi was one of the ones that he didn't have to correct in that way. But he still needed to encourage them. He still needed to ex exhort them. He still needed to remind them that you could say some of the things are warnings, but they're mild warnings. They're not like some of the warnings in Hebrews where the writer's saying, you know, the axe is about to fall, you know, <laughs> the boom is about to be lowered. Um, he's basically, the whole letter, without preaching through the whole letter, you're doing great, but don't let your guard down. Guard against discouragement. Guard against weariness. Guard against earthly desires. Guard against pride. And you think of all the things he says to them, helping them guard themselves against them. And he does that throughout the whole letter, but, but really right in this prayer, he lays it all out, doesn't he? He lays it all out. He says, he says God's going to finish this work in you, so I'm praying this, that you continue to grow. And he gives, I'm going to break it into five things that he tells them to continue to grow in. So he says, I want you to continue to grow, abound more and more in love. Love's always the first, and it should be, because love is the rudder that steers your life. 
if you're if you're alive, just just like Le, uh, Tony was talking about the impact of thankfulness of gratitude in your life. Love does the same thing, and we know that it's the greatest thing. Uh, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Love covers a multitude of sin, and it, and it steers your life. When you have a heart of love toward God and love toward his people and love toward his creation, it steers your life. And it, it never fails, and it's meant to be pursued. So he prays that you would abound more and more, that your love would continue to grow. You know? Love can grow stale, just like in a relationship. You know? you know, I've been married, it'll be 46 years in, in a couple of weeks. And Vaughn's not here to defend herself. <laughs> but she's probably watching. Um, but, you know, well, we had kind of an odd romance anyway. But, um, you know, how couples, you know, they, things that were cute in the beginning aren't so cute anymore. <laughs> They're annoying now. And we both have some of those things. And we have to choose to love one another. Choose to continue to grow in love for one another and, and allow our love for one another to build one another up. So he prays that that would be so for them. That if they're, he knowing that if their love would abound more and more, that they would continue on the path God set for them. He says he wants that, that love to grow so they would abound in knowledge and discernment. And those are two interesting words there because um, the word knowledge there actually means discernment and the word discernment there actually means understanding or clear judgment. Uh, and so it's interesting how they put them together there. But really what he's saying is he wants you to abound in love more and more so that, so that you can grow in knowledge and grow in discernment. And really what he's talking about there is that you can have clarity. Clarity is, is such a wonderful thing, isn't it? With all that's going on, when you can see clearly. He knows that all of the things that are going to come against them. Because he goes through that as you read the rest of the letter, the things that would discourage them, the things that would make them lose heart. You know those things too. And you have to be able to see, see that ahead of time. So you want to have knowledge or, or he says real knowledge you need to be able to recognize these things and you have clear judgment about them they might seem not so dangerous but they could take it remember this is where he this is the letter where he makes the appeal to not rely on yourself no matter how much you've accomplished in life he says be like jesus be like jesus for the joy, said, well, no, the joy of seven horns in Hebrews. You see, it'd be like Jesus who laid down that he could humble himself. Be that kind of humble. Lay down all of your accomplishment. He says, everything I've accomplished, everything I've accomplished is, he says, it's like a pile of dung compared to knowing Jesus. Put those things aside. And he says that then, we want to get to that place of, of knowledge and discernment. So what? So he says it this way. You can approve the things that are excellent. So if you have knowledge and discernment, if you have clarity, you can see clearly, you can then look and say, that's what's good. That's what, it, I like one version says it this way. It says, say yes to what really matters. Let God continue to make you faithful. Let him continue to work in you so that you can have knowledge and discernment to be about what really matters because there's going to be all kinds of distraction. And he didn't have the internet to deal with or cell phones or, or Siri. But that won't happen today. I turned it off on my watch. <laughs> Siri's not going to talk to me. And finally... He said, he goes on to say that, that we would then be pure or they would be pure and blameless or sincere and blameless. I, I use the word here, genuineness. What we want, what, what he's praying for them and we, we want to pray for ourselves is that we would be 
pure and blameless. And that word sincere or pure means tested by the sunlight. You go back to the thing on clarity, right? Tested as genuine, pure. And, and um, blameless means not being led into sin, you know. There's so many things that seem neutral, but if you stay at them too long, you realize they're leading you down the wrong path. So he's, he's praying that they would continue on this path that they're on, not being led astray, but that they would grow in love, that they would grow in knowledge, discernment, excellence, and genuineness. And that that would bring about that they would be filled be, because they were filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. But what you have started because God worked in you. He made you faithful. He's making you faithful. He's using you as a faithful person. And in the end, your faithfulness will bring glory to God. In the words of Jesus, well done, good and faithful servant. Isn't that what you want to hear about your life? Well, I tell you this morning that like the Philippian church, with all our shortcomings as a church, God has made us a faithful people. And we need to celebrate that. We, ne we need to never downplay its value in us. It's what's made us who we are. It's what we have become. And we want to celebrate faithfulness as a people. Don't ever take being a faithful follower of Christ for granted. Don't, don't ever take it for granted. It's a special thing that you're faithful to God. And when you hit crossroads in life, when you hit challenges in life, when you hit discouragement, of course, that's not of you, but if, when you hit discouragement, one of your prayers should be, God, make me faithful in my response to this. Whatever the challenge is, you want to come out the other side of it knowing that you've been faithful. When Paul was being questioned, um, it, you know, and giving his testimony, he said, I proved to faithful to the vision. I stayed with what God said to me. And you and I want to do the thing, the same kind of thing. So don't ever take it for granted. Secondly, make time to affirm others' faithfulness. I could, I could literally go right through this whole, everybody sitting here today, I could look into the camera and mention some of the people who will watch this, maybe watching right now, and I could call you out by name and tell you of your faithfulness, tell you of, the, of, of where I see that you have endured and persevered and tell you the same thing that Paul told them. He that began a good work in you will complete it. I'm confident of that. I'm confident of that. You know, I know we don't earn God's faithfulness. It's just who he is. But in a sense, he's saying, because you've been faithful, God will be faithful. Because God does look at our choices. You know. So make time to affirm others' faithfulness. And thirdly, actively pursue the Spirit's work in you and in us as a people. Say, God, let this be your prayer. I pray, pray for yourself and pray for the church. I pray that our love might abound more and more in real knowledge and, and discernment, that we would approve what is right and what is good, and that we would walk pure and blameless before God. That's a good prayer for yourself and for others. Amen? Amen. Let's make sure we're a people that celebrate faithfulness. Celebrate it as such a wonderful thing that we have. Amen. Let's stand together. Prayer partners will be up here in a minute. You know, if you have something you need prayer for, they'll, they'll pray for you. But let's just pray together before we dismiss and, and ask God to just work in us, continue to work in us. Father, this has been, for many of us, a long journey. It's been a, a, a many years of having you impart truth into us, touch our lives, call us to your purposes, Lord, and call us to your people, Lord. Lord, we ask that we would not only continue to celebrate the way you've made us faithful, but that we would pursue faithfulness, Lord, and be able to pray the same things for ourselves and 
one another as Paul prayed for the church at Philippi. We pray, Lord, that you would make clear to us your future for this church and for, for our ongoing journey after you, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we do lift our voices to you, Lord, as we did this morning. We praise you for your goodness and faithfulness, and we praise you that you are never quitting on anyone who follows you, Lord. So we thank you for that now. We ask you to continue to work this in us individually, but especially together, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here online with us.